On today's episode, BlackRock's Larry Fink tells an inconvenient truth. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. This man is not an engineer, or a scientist, or a politician. He's Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, one of the world's biggest investment firms, currently managing $9,400 billion in assets. Now, control of that kind of wealth has economic and political implications, and Fink's annual letter to CEOs is watched carefully. His last annual letter, entitled The Power of Capitalism, was the traditional celebration of capitalism as an engine of economic growth. But in it, he also described a sea change in the economy which will have profound implications for engineering. Now, according to Fink, who naturally has an investment view of economic evolution, startups and high-growth innovation companies have access to capital that has never been seen before. Global financial assets now total $400,000 billion. Now, young people with a good idea who want to build something have access to investment capital in ways and amounts that would have been unimaginable even 20 years ago. Absurdly low interest rates until recently were a factor, and frankly, massive government deficit spending in most of the world's industrialized nations, well, that's a factor too. But regardless, there's never been a better time for an innovator to start a company. Now, the other factor he notes is the changing nature of those startups and the money that finances them. Now, according to Fink, the next 1,000 unicorns, as he calls them, won't be search engines or social media companies. They'll be startups that will drive decarbonization. He also mentions the elephant in the room, which is refreshing, and that's the green premium, the extra cost of green energy, and the fact that that has to come down before a meaningful transition can be made. As it stands now, that transition is going to take three or four decades at best, maybe longer, for the simple reason that most of the world's population cannot afford to pay more for energy. This means substantial investment in the existing petroleum-based energy infrastructure for at least half a century, as significant demand for fossil fuels will likely be a reality for decades, barring some dramatic technological breakthrough. Delory Fink isn't an engineer, but he is addressing with some clarity the issues that most engineers understand about sustainability going forward, the issues that politicians won't talk about and that many environmentalists intentionally obfuscate. Going green is not about politics, and it's not about regulations. It's about developing a set of technologies that deliver the same benefits that petroleum does at equal or lower cost. This is an engineering problem. But developing a workable technical solution is only the first phase. Scaling these solutions into mass production requires capital, and Larry Fink is sending a signal that the global investment community has dollars to invest, like they did with the original software startups in Silicon Valley. Now, if so, we're about to see a couple of decades of radical technological innovation. But cash is king. To take my home off-grid with solar would cost approximately $50,000, which isn't going to happen in this space-time continuum. But what if it cost $15,000? I'd do it tomorrow. So as Fink describes it simply like Field of Dreams, build it at lower cost and they will come. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.